so let's go ahead and get started. We'll uh, let a few others catch up and once they get logged in. So, um, hey guys, good to see you and thanks for coming. Uh, tonight we're going to do a little bit of a, a catch up on GDC and some of the things I saw there and then um, uh, I was going to go through a few of the slides and show kind of what I've been working on lately, just um, some little indie game stuff and then uh, why NG Skin Tools is the bomb diggity for skinning and getting yourself out of ridiculous situations. And then uh, a couple other announcements before we kind of get get going is, um, one, we've redone the website a little while ago, and uh, under resources we've linked to a bunch of free stuff. I'm not sure everyone's seen that, but we've uh, I tried to organize it so that you could find the um, 101 community and uh, our Pinterest boards and um, <laughs> all the software reviews I've done. <laughs> I didn't realize I've reviewed it that many times, but uh, there's the list of uh, the some good, the some bad, and the some ugly, and then the some not so ugly uh, reviews, and some tips and tricks in those reviews. And then uh, we've also um, just finished the Morpheus Engineering course, and um, it went pretty well. And uh, we're we're realizing that the students that took that definitely need a little more ramp up prerequisite in object-oriented programming. So um, this is going to tie into the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is uh, RED9. So RED9 is one of the functional foundational tools that uh, Morpheus, the new rig from CG Monks, is being built on. And the, the engineering class was focused on being able to take this pretty hefty open source code library for animation um, and all kinds of stuff and be able to leverage that in your rigs and specifically meta rigging. So uh, it turns out that Mark is um, going to be doing a, a talk at the develop conference and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just paste the link in here. Um, so definitely if you're in that part of the world and can make it that'd be awesome but we're going to try to use some of this information from him on uh, the metadata part of the Red 9 tools and build up a little primer course and of course donate with uh, his beer button um, but Mark sat in on the course and he was a really good help and um, I think we put on Facebook uh, one of the students had expanded some of the uh, the intersect geometry code to go with uh, the NURB surfaces as opposed to just polygons so that was a nice bonus and that's part of what that course was um, coming out to be, which was not just learn how to use it, but to also give back to the open source uh, rigging community. Um, and so that's going to be kind of what I wanted to talk a little bit about later tonight. So yeah, if you have questions, ask, but I was going to show, if you want to, if you have time, I was going to show how I used NG Skin Tools to try to fix these wings, which were, uh, while not perfect, were a nightmare before. So if you'd like, we, we can touch on that. Let me go open my file up in my... Let's see. Desktop. Target. Vampire 4. Skin. Sorry. Yeah, there he is. Okay. So let me open this guy up. Okay, so uh, you can see this normally. Um, <laughs> I would, I would never. I would never want to have uh, to try to skin something that looks like this. Uh, it's been poly reduced. It's double sided. Um, it's it's tessellated not along the texture lines, so you have these huge gaps. Um, let's see if I can draw on the screen here real quick. We'll do a uh, highlight. Okay, so you have this outer mesh that is a uh, an existing separate mesh, and then you've got texture that goes along it to darken it, but 
you have an edge here, and then the next closest edge is a huge polygon away, and then parts of those edges are really bad triangles. So, like, really, this is this is kind of a nightmare thing to rig. On top of which, Maya doesn't have any tools built in whatsoever to handle um, to handle dealing with skinning thick geometry. Okay, so. Right away, the first thing I did was I just went in and grabbed the faces. I went down to paint, sculpt, and um, if you haven't looked at the paint tools inside of Maya lately, they've actually gotten much better. Like, for example, um, the slide tool is fantastic for doing stuff like uh, compression. Like, if I go in and slide, um, uh, it'll, it'll do, like, if you're th you think about skin compressing to do wrinkles, like at the corners of the eye, the slide uh, works just like that. And then there's a nice relax and all kinds of stuff. So let me grab um, faces here and then switch to verts. And then we'll go paint. Sculpt. Okay. Yeah, so there's slide, then there's uh, you know, regular sculpt. But what I did was I went in and I just said, you know what? Um, I need to just push the thickness out of this thing. So I went to um, pull, <laughs> or push, I went to push, and then I just flooded it once or twice, and basically forced it along its normal, and thickened it up even more so that the verts weren't sitting right on top of each other, and if there was a little bit of a, a misalignment in skinning, that they wouldn't, wouldn't start clipping immediately, right? Which is uh, the first thing you have to watch out for. Um, the second is, trying to assign these weights. I went in and tried the new voxel skinning in the new Maya and it did an okay job but it was still rough. So here you can see a good example when you push this too far here we've got these edges that are pulling away this texture border. So I tried, like I said, I tried all kinds of stuff with the built-in skinning tools um, and you know, relax doesn't do it. There's just, there's just all kinds of problems with the weight hammer. Um, it can't handle the multiple geometry. So um, then NG skin tools to the rescue. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is um, I'm going to point out areas that aren't painting. So that's the, the main area that I used to, to help get this under control. So the first thing is we initialize the skin layers and then I just left it because I don't even care about paint right now. I'm going to use the assign weight and relax. And the assign weight has uh, a couple interesting things. So the first thing is this is what um, I'm not going to get into all the NG skin tool stuff, but I'm going to point out a few things people may or may not realize. And this is, uh, so this, look at this object with me. I'm going to say, um, face. So the tip of this wing is its own shell, okay? So it's got its own, uh, separate geometry. The next shell is the wing, and then the wing mesh itself. So I've got three separate surfaces that all need to be skinned and dealt with at the same time. So the first thing is, Ignore separate shells. This is this is this saved uh, everything. <laughs> so if I go grab subverts and uh, hey now I said verts. Oh, let me get out of viewport 2.0. Hold on. There we go. Okay. If I go grab a couple verts and I turn this, uh, I go to relax and. Um, I relax. You can see that it's not relaxing together, right? It relaxes its own mesh, and the weight hammer does the same thing, uh, except for relax here lets you lets you continually iterate, and weight hammer kind of hits a hits a dead end at some point. Um, so I could try grabbing all these, and now what do what do you do? So uh, you can say associate by volume search radius, and now relax will actually take in consideration by volume so it does distance which for a wing there's not anything like a, a rib or something so now I can actually relax all these together and I can really I can crank the relax up and basically really soften this whole thing out right so now I've averaged out this uh, texture area and um, given myself a little breathing room and I do by volume. So now I'm basically getting all this stuff for free, right? I don't have to try to manage weights across three separate shells. Awesome right away. Next, assign weights. Um, 
the unify weights is what, again, this is where you come in and you're like, uh, I can't believe this was a thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these guys. Uh, I'm going to grab with a, a little better shell here. And then um, the other thing I do wish was a little easier was just to, uh, to grab and find the correct uh, influences. But, you know, what are you going to do? This is the left wing. I think finger three was what it is. Let's see. Copy. List active. Whatever. So that's... Uh, yeah, so we can filter this out too if we want to, but um, like I can do a wing star or something and I can find all the wings. And that makes it easier to find the list, right? So uh, I'm going to say basically I could do assignment and now you can see that it assigned, uh, again, you can use, um, you know, it just does a solid assign, which is pretty handy. but. If you've got it close and you're already ready to wait and you just want to tighten the weights up on the stuff, this is where Unify comes in. And, again, you can say ignore separate shells. So let's just do Unify uh, by itself, and I'm going to assign, and you can see that it's basically pulling everything together. But look what happens. I've now just, just lost my weighting across these things. And then you'd have to copy and paste weights or do all kinds of other terrible, terrible things. So, instead, I'm going to turn on ignore separate shells and now I can tighten the weights down so that my wing isn't pulling and stretching the texture along this rib right I want I want the ribs of this wing to basically be stiff and then I want the in-between areas to be solid so I can just go in and I can tighten the weights up with the unify and it completely takes care of I can assign and then I can unify the weights. And it completely fixes all of the weight issues that are a problem. Look, it pulled this guy in. I can grab these weights here and just finish fixing this wing. Oops. <laughs> I don't want to grab way out there. I'll grab a smaller selection. But it takes the, the average of the weights and it brings them together. And because it's doing it without caring of shell size, I can do both sides at the same time across three separate objects. So this this unify weights button, like I couldn't have finished these wings even anywhere close to something that was passable. I mean this guy's gonna be who knows how big. He's like for a little mobile game, so he's already a little overbuilt, but you know, for for what it's worth, like the crashing is a big problem, right? So that's that's the number one thing you want to avoid. But I want basic movement on these wings and uh without rebuilding the model or sending it back or you know I, I should have done this earlier I just was trying to be stubborn and and I tried to to do it with regular Maya <laughs> and it it was just a nightmare so the the unify weights again save me I I probably over several days redid these wings five different times and spent hours and hours just fighting with stuff and trying to be tricky about it and you know I rebuilt the wing plane shape and copied weights up and you know, I did try, try to do the the sensible thing, which was just build a retop a wing, skin it real nice, and copy the weights. And it was such a nightmare across because the geometry is bad on both sides. It was just it wasn't working. And so then I scrapped that, and I uh, I started smoothing everything. And then it was just, um, it just there was just no good way to manage this. So I just opened up NG Skin Tools, and I thought, well, I'll go into assign weights. And I hadn't, to be honest, I hadn't looked at Unify before. Um, and then when I saw the ignore separate shells, that was it. Like, I went, there. there's my answer to save me another two days of fighting with these things. And and I posted on Twitter that I was trying out Softimage as well. I, I, was, I was that desperate. So by the time I downloaded the new service pack from Softimage, I had redone the wings. <laughs> like, did, I could download a gig file and install it. And in that same time, I tried out the Unify Weights, and I basically started from scratch on the wing, and I got it to uh, beyond passable and better than I had been be able to previously with any of the other stuff I was doing. So um, these are open source tools now. If you can contribute, uh, please do. <laughs> they're just, they're so amazing. It's not even, you know, the, they're, they're open source, and they're free, and they... Uh, 
I mean, for face rigs and for everything else, when you're trying to manage weights across multiple pieces of geometry, there's just nothing that even comes close to how well they work. Um, the other thing for games is nice is that he's gone in and added now the ability to max influence, um, use a max influence. So, you know, we can go over settings, set this to four, and apply, and it does a smart, intelligent job of pushing your weights out. It's not like a prune, it's not doing the hard limit like Maya does with the skin cluster. Um, so, you know, I think my two revelations this week have been uh, the NG skin tools um, unify weights, I'd say, and then using reference edits to manage um, animation and customize settings in and out of Maya uh, and skip all the all the dancing around with trying to get animation stuff to work with with HIK. Um, yeah, I think those are my big big breakthrough moments this, this past week has just been like pushing through some of the stuff that has just been a pain point lately. But yeah, I mean, you, you try this and you'll never go back. You'll, you'll be like, it'll everything else will feel like you suddenly are dealing with stone tools trying to do finished carpentry. You'll be like, oh, I could cut this and I have a rock. Or I could use NG skin tools, and you're using like a table saw with with actual rulers and measurements and power. I don't know. I guess the best I can describe it. <laughs> just, just this, 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 these type of crazy geometry wing nonsense. Like it's just impossible otherwise. So um, the next time you have something crazy, or even just a nice rig when you've got multiple meshes, give it a try. Uh, and that's it. I think we'll call it.